Where are you from? How do you think about this question? I think it is a pretty simple question, made out of four words only. Where are you from? Most people can answer by using just few words. For example, Ya iz Rasi, me India sehu, sem Cheska. Nevertheless, there are people in this world who have to use more than just few simple words to answer. For example, me. I have to use at least 12 words to answer. I'm half Russian, half Indian, and I live in Czech Republic. <laughs> Given that our world is getting more globalized, there are millions of kids like me who have to use more than just few simple words to answer. Those kids are known as third culture kids. In the 1990s, American sociologists Pollock and Van Recken had coined a definition which is used up to now. According to it, a third culture kid is a person who builds relationships to all of the cultures that he or she lived in. There are many third culture kids in this world. Uh, for some common examples are missionary kids, children of expatriates, children born in cross-culture marriages, or children of immigrants. From their research, Pollock and Van Recken had found out there are many benefits of being a third culture kid. First of all, they are very adaptive meaning we are successful at fitting in because we are able to accept and understand many of the core values that drive the behavior in the culture. Secondly, we can cross and change cultures easily, meaning because we are adaptive and have combined knowledge about other cultures, we develop excellent interpersonal and intercultural skills. Thirdly, we are extremely open-minded. As we are raised in foreign cultures, we get to learn a lot of diverse values, attitudes, behaviors, and expectations. This helps us to expand our worldview. And last, but not the least, we live in the moment. <laughs> Given that every day we experience a sense of urgency because we realize that the moment will not last for long and would be replaced by something new to come, we attempt to live in the moment. As I said, there are many third culture kids in this world. There are politicians and celebrities who used to be third culture kids. Some now they're known as adult third culture kids. Some common examples being Barack Obama, who's half Kenyan, half Kenyan and half American. Or Uma Thurman, who was born in Mexico to a German father and a Swedish mother. Or Freddie Mercury, who was born in Tanzania, grew up in India and then in the United Kingdom. As you might have understood, there are many benefits of being a third culture kid. But there's still one thing that bothers me. Is it actually an advantage to be a third culture kid? Or let's put it in the other way. What are disadvantages to being a third culture kid? To answer this question, let me first of all tell you my story. I was born to my Indian mother, father and Russian mother in Moscow. When I was eight years old, my parents decided to move to the Czech Republic. And since then, we have lived in Prague. It has been over 10 years that I live here. This story is pretty simple, isn't it? But whenever I share this story with people, it seems to be complicated to them. They tend to find it confusing. So what usually happens then, they try to find out which culture out of all three of them is the most important for me. Let me give you an example. Once I was on this trip, and I met this lovely person, Maria. She was sweet, and it was really a lot of fun to chat with her. Well, until this question popped up. Where are you from? Whenever I hear this simple question made out of four words only, I usually freeze and start thinking. Okay, I was born in Moscow, hence I'm Russian. But wait, my father is Indian. Am I Indian too? Am I actually an Indian if I live here in Prague? Maybe I'm Czech. Yeah, I'm Czech, I grew up here, right? But wait, Russian is my mother tongue, and I don't even speak Czech so correctly. Am I then Russian? But if I'm Russian, why do I speak in different languages to my parents? Why do I speak in English to my father? I'm confused. <laughs> At the end, I was not exactly sure how to answer to Maria, so I chose the easier way. I just simply told her all my thoughts and evaluations. She was definitely confused at the beginning, <laughs> seriously. But then she gathered her confidence and told me, seriously, that I should be Czech because I live in Czech Republic. <laughs> Situations like this make me always wonder, could be there some reason why people in general find it hard to accept a multiple answer instead of one single answer? 
Well, I think one of the reasons is because we are all cognitive misers, <laughs> meaning we don't want to waste time and energy thinking a lot, so we make reductionist and simple conclusions about the phenomena. So instead of analyzing my multicultural identity, which is made out of three cultures, Maria chose an easier way. She tried to identify me just to one culture. This is the first limitation of being a third culture kid. People do not understand my multicultural identity, and they try to identify me just to one culture. I meet cognitive misers like Maria on a daily basis, literally, on a daily basis. And there is one question that tends to be popular among them, and that is, which culture do you identify with more? Here's the question for you. Do you think that for a third culture kid, it is easy to answer this question? Well, before you consider it, let me show you this. This is a culture iceberg that was constructed by cross-cultural trainer and consultant Dr. Robert Call. According to it, people around us see a surface culture, but rarely to get to understand and accept our deep culture. The main idea behind this illustration is that it shows the importance of culture, not just in shaping our customs and traditions, but as well in shaping our beliefs and values, meaning that culture strongly affects the way our personality develops in the way we view the world around us. Taking into account this, think about their culture kids. How would their personality develop, considering that they're exposed not just to one culture, but to many of them? Well, in my case, I've noticed that all my cultures have affected the way I associate with friends, communicate with authority, or how I simply stand up for myself. My friends might have noticed this, but there's something really funny about me making new friends. If I make a friend, I believe this friendship is forever. I might know the person for a few days, if not hours, but I believe that we will become best friends forever. Innocent, right? But why is it so? Well, I think it's because of my Russian culture. I've noticed there's some common trend in Russia. Если мы стали друзьями, то всего лишь навсегда. Here takes the leap my Indian culture. Because of it, I believe I'm a socially brave person and I can easily make a lot of friends. But because of my Russian culture, I get very easily attached to my friends and it's painful for me to lose them. Another example, which I personally consider to be the most important, is that children in India are supposed to be respectful towards their parents. And in the way, they should be submissive. While children in Russia tend to be more independent and slightly rebellious. Because of these two cultures, I find it difficult to communicate with my own families. Sometimes I'm seen as being too independent, too rebellious, and sometimes I'm seen as being too submissive, too respectful. So I really do not know which standards should I follow, even when communicating with my own families. This is one of my biggest dilemmas for me to resolve. When it comes to the point that I should argue with someone who is older than me and has some sort of authority, I tend to turn on to the Indian submissive side of me not the Russian. And I think this could be the reason why sometimes it is really hard for me to get on my confidence and tell the people what I feel and what I really think. And I think this could be the reason why it's hard for me sometimes to stand up for myself. These are just examples of my daily behavior, which I believe are strongly affected by the cultures present in my life. I personally consider culture iceberg to be an important concept because it emphasizes the point why I personally cannot identify myself just with one culture. People might think that I'm Russian, Czech, Indian, based on the surface culture, but trust me, rarely and actually never in my case, they understand that real me, here inside me, is actually the mix of my cultures, which lay in the deep culture. So coming back to the question, do you think that for a third culture kid, it is easy to answer this question? Well, in most cases, it's not. This is the second limitation of being a third culture kid. People do not understand that our multicultural experiences do not teach us just a new language or new traditions. It shapes and changes our personality and the way we view the world around us. One thing that I really learned from being a third culture kid is that I understand that people usually do not understand me. This concept made my life easier. You want to know how? Well, I'll tell you. I learned to lie. <laughs> I learned to change my identity 
and appearance according to the situation. I learned to tell people what they want me to tell them. I learned to be a chameleon. <laughs> well, whenever people would ask me that simple question, where are you from? My answer would usually vary according to the situation. Usually I lie to people simply because I just feel tired to explain a lot. So I will tell them that I originate only from one country, because that is what they want me to tell them. That is why most people think I'm Russian. Another time when I tend to lie, it's when I meet someone who really does not like one culture or another. So if I meet someone who really doesn't like Russia, I tend to tell people that I'm Indian. If someone really doesn't like India, I will tell the person that I'm Czech. <laughs> In a way, I should be ashamed of it. At least I think so. I don't know what you think. <laughs> But that's the way I am. I change my behavior, I change my identity, because it makes my life easier, and because it makes me feel safe. Same as chameleon would change its skin in order to protect itself. Well, surprisingly, I found out that I was not the only one who tend to tell lies. Apparently, their culture kids develop a skill of being a culture chameleon, meaning that they can switch language and appearance in order just to fit better into the environment. Although this might sound funny that a kid can become a lizard, this is actually a third limitation of being a third culture kid. Because people do not understand us, we lie. And because we lie, we become chameleons. By following this strategy, the chameleon strategy, we may actually never learn how to maintain all our multicultural identities together. So it's not good. Well, so here we are. These are the three disadvantages of being a third culture kid. At least, these are disadvantages which I personally consider to be the most important, at least for me. People might think that I'm Russian, Indian, Czech, but they never understand that these are the disadvantages which I have as being a third culture kid. Although, as you've heard before, that third culture kids have many benefits, such as being open-minded, being adaptive, and living in the moment. And to be quite honest, when I found out that I'm a third culture kid, I was very happy. Although I had a feeling that I do not belong to any of the countries, I knew that there are many more kids like me, so I belong at least with them. Nevertheless, because people do not understand me, it makes me feel sometimes isolated. And I would wish that people would know this instead of knowing how many benefits I have. So now, let's think, how should we, as a society, interact with third culture kids, considering their uniqueness? Thank you. <laughs>